The plot in the middle is a pork chop plot of the 2020 launch opportunity from Earth to Mars. And on the left is a trajectory with roughly 190 days of travel time. And on the right is another trajectory with roughly 350 days of travel time. Now the first time you ever see a pork chop plot, it kind of looks like a huge mess and makes no sense. But this video will be walking through step by step exactly how to read these plots and why they are extremely useful in designing interplanetary trajectories. So first, let's take a look at the X and Y axes, where the X axis represents Earth departure dates, meaning when you want to leave Earth. And the zero point in this example is 2020 July 1. So this means that when X equals 10, this represents an Earth departure of July 10th. When X equals 20, represents an Earth departure of July 20th, and so on. And the Y axis is similar, but represents Mars arrival dates, so when you want to get to Mars. With a zero point in this example corresponds to 2020 November 1 and then increases as the y axis goes up. Now the blue lines in this plot represent constant travel times. So say along this blue line right here that's labeled 200 as you go along it every single trajectory along that line will have a travel time of 200 days from Earth to Mars. And the rest of the lines are contours with equal delta V for Earth to Mars trajectories. So this means that, say, for example, this contour right here that's labeled 7.0, anywhere along that contour represents a trajectory from Earth to Mars that will have 7 kilometers per second of delta V. So this means that, for example, if you launch on January 12th, which is right along here, and go for 200 days of travel time, this will correspond to a kilometers or delta V of 7 kilometers per second. And the same thing would happen if you actually decide to launch on August 5th over here with still a 200 day trajectory. It will still have 7 kilometers per second of delta V. Now notice there is a gap here in the plot in this section right here. And this line separates trajectories that have a true anomaly, a change in true anomaly less than 180 degrees, which is the short way, which is below the gap, and then above the gap is for trajectories that have greater a change in true anomaly greater than 180 degrees over here, which will have longer travel times, as you can see by the blue lines. And then note that, so for a trajectory with a true anomaly change of less than 180 degrees, this is an example of that right here. And for a trajectory with a change in true anomaly of greater than 180 degrees is an example right here. And notice for the ones that go the long way where the true anomaly is greater than 180 degrees, this trajectory actually crosses through the Mars orbit here and then comes back around the backside in order to rendezvous with Mars. Now these delta V values are calculated from two maneuvers, which is an Earth departure burn and a Mars arrival burn. This is another version of a pork chop plot which separates those two burns. So in this plot, the pink lines represent outgoing C3 from Earth where C3 is the excess velocity above escape velocity from Earth orbit and that value squared, which gives it units of kilometer squared per second squared over here. And they do this because when you square velocity, that is proportional to kinetic energy, since specific kinetic energy where you divide by mass is equal to one half velocity squared, which is why people use that sometimes. And the blue lines represent how much excess velocity the spacecraft has at Mars arrival, which is how much delta V you need in order to capture in Mars orbit. So just like the other plots, just like the other pork chop plot, this is also a contour plot where say if you follow this contour right here that's labeled 16, at every one of those points that you will have a C3 equal to 16 for all of those trajectories and so forth. And notice that the gap is still here, where below the gap is a change in true anomaly of less than 180 degrees, and above is greater than 180 degrees. Now, both of these types of pork shop plots are used, but I find that this one, the one with only delta V, is a little bit cleaner and easier to read. So it's the 37th video in the series, and this one I'm going to be going over pork shop plots. So now for a definition of pork chop plots is that they are contour plots that are the results of a brute force optimization procedure. Now notice I have optimization in quotes because brute force methods are not optimization. In order to do optimization that requires taking a derivative and finding when a derivative is equal to zero. But the point of these pork chop plots are that they allow you to quickly see desirable launch windows from perspective of delta V and travel time. So say when you want 
to find a trajectory to go from Earth to Mars, you can use a pork chop plot like this, and you can quickly see that in this region here is where the lowest delta V is going to be. That corresponds to these departure dates and these arrival dates. So you can find what the launch windows are for Earth to Mars. And then maybe if you want to take a little bit more time to travel, you can choose a trajectory or for maybe any other reason, you can choose a trajectory that has a change in true anomaly of greater than 180 degrees over here. And then from there, you can see that this region along here is going to be the best from a delta V perspective. And notice as you get farther away from these regions, the delta V is increasing. So that's how you know from looking at one of these, when is a good time to launch, say, for delta V. And now Mars 2020, what they did is they launched on July 30th. So that corresponds to right here at X equals 30. And they're going to get there around February 18th, which corresponds to this region here, which makes sense because they wanted to use as little Delta V as possible with, while also not having too long of a transfer time of roughly 180 days. So now we get to how to actually define the pork chop problem. So the first thing you have to define is, is your departure and arrival orbits, which correspond to bodies in this case, where in this case, we are departing from Earth. So we need to know the orbit of Earth and we are arriving at Mars. So we need to know the orbit of Mars. Then you want to define a launch window. So in this case, we are defining that we are considering launching from 1 July 2020 to 1 September 2020, which is the X axis of this plot. And then we want to define an arrival window, where in this case, we want to arrive at 1 November 2020, or between 1 November 2020 and 24 January 2022, which is the Y axis in this plot. And then you want to define a search grid time step. So basically, in what increments do I want to calculate these values? And in this case, it's one day. So this results that the launch window is 63 days. So this results in 63 departures that you want to consider. And then the arrival window is 451. So that's 451 arrivals you want to consider since the time step is one day, which results in a combination in a total of 28,413 combinations. But when solving Lambert's problem, you have to solve for the short way and the long way, which is why we have this gap here. So you have to times that by two, which gives you a total of 56,826 trajectory calculations that you have to do for this pork chop plot. And then just some other definitions, you have to define the reference frame in which you are getting these orbits or trajectories. So basically the ephemeris data in what reference frame are you referring to? And you need a central body because the gravitational parameter of the central body is part of the Lambert's problem calculation. So as far as implementing this procedure in the software, the first thing is that we have 56,826 Lambert's problems to solve. So the first step would be to load in the spice kernels necessary to do this. So the first thing is you want to load a spice kernel to get the ephemeris data of Earth and Mars for the given time windows in 2020. And in this case, I use DE432, but there's other DE kernels like DE430 that you could also use. And I also needed to load in a leap seconds kernel to do the conversions between UTC and ephemeris time. And then as far as the meat and potatoes of the procedure, you have a nested for loop that goes through each of the combinations of trajectories. So for each departure ephemeris time, so for each X value here, and then for each arrival ephemeris time, so for each Y value here, first you wanna calculate the time of flight, you wanna calculate the state of Earth at departure, and you calculate the state of Mars at arrival, which these three things lead to the definition of a Lambert's problem. So once you have these three things and you have the gravitational parameter of the sun, you can go ahead and solve Lambert's problem for one, the short way and two, the long way. And then you want to calculate the departure C3 and arrival V infinity, which the, the departure C3 is equal to the difference of the velocity of Earth at departure versus the velocity of the spacecraft at departure, which is calculated using the Lambert's problem. So that difference, the norm of it squared, the same thing when you arrive. So the arrival V infinity is equal to the velocity of the spacecraft at arrival minus the velocity of Mars at arrival and taking the norm of that since it is a vector and you store all those values in a 2D grid array. And then once you have all those values stored and once you do all the calculations, you can go ahead and plot, which as I've already shown, there's at least two versions of being able to plot these pork shot plots and basically they tell you different things. So there's many different options for plotting, which I'll be going over in the next video. 
So for some computing considerations, this is a very obvious candidate for parallelization because these calculations are independent of each other. So the solution to one Lambert's problem does not affect the solution to any other Lambert's problem. So for that reason, these calculations don't have to be done in any particular order, which makes it a good candidate for parallelization. So one way to implement it would be to have one of your cores you computer take x equals 0 to 10, the next core takes x equals 10 to 20, and so on. So these calculations can um, all be done in parallel with all the cores of your computer, which will greatly decrease the runtime depending on how many cores that you have. And another way to also speed up this procedure is to implement the Lambert function in a compiled language like C++ or Fortran, and then call it from Python, which is something you can do. And this will also, again, greatly speed up the runtime because when I tried implementing these, the difference between Python and C++, C++ was about 10 times faster in doing just the Lambert's procedure. So that's also another way. If you put these two together, you can do a lot more calculations in a lot less amount of time. So you can have a larger search space for doing these calculations. So that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you like the video to help me out with YouTube algorithm. And also let me know in the comments if anything was confusing or if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover about pork chop plots. In the next video, I'll be going over the pork chop plot software, basically the function that I have that implements this procedure and how I make all the plots. So yeah, let me know any questions in the comments and thank you for watching.